Thank you for staying with us on Consider This. Melissa and Sharad here talking about how to increase productivity in the private healthcare sector. Well, let's uh, take a look at workforce because that is an issue that you feel very strongly about. The last time you were on, you talked a lot about <laughs> workforce, Latif. Yeah. Um, and I want to discuss the issue of workforce in the healthcare sector because, again, there is, you know, the stock take is that there is a lack of specialists within um, the healthcare sector. And the assumption is that the private sector trains all the uh, medical the minds, public. you know, of our country, for them only to leave into to go into the public private, into the, yeah. the public sector trains for the private sector. Latif, would you mind telling us how MPC is looking to address <laughs> this? You see, in every economic sector, you're bound to have issues which are considered common, right? Uh, of course, labour or workforce is always an issue. Whether you're in electrical lettering, you're in construction, so, uh, so, so it goes also for the private healthcare. Now, we have to look at whether, you know, uh, as you put it rightly earlier, you know, uh, regulations, when they were introduced, they are with a purpose, you know, when they were put into place. And we want to make sure that, you know, uh, regulation ensures safety, security, you know, of citizens at the same time, ensuring that, you know, envi environment is also protected, you know, for you know, for citizen Malaysia. We talk about welfare, you know, of Malaysians and all that. Now, the same thing we have to look at, uh, you know, on the issue of workforce. Mm. Now, of course, we talk about uh, you know shortage, shortage of expertise, you know, experts in, in some areas and all that. So we have to look at we have to look at regulations that we have in place. Whether regulations that we have, do these regulations facilitate or, again, as I've said, I think earlier, frustrate? Are they obstructing? Because we need to ensure that regulations ensures that people find easy to do business. So the same goes for the private healthcare. So what we did was is to engage, all right, with the uh, practitioners out there, the private sector. They tell you, they will tell you about regulation. They will tell you what are the requirements and all that. Now we have to do verification. Then we do engagement, all right, with the uh, uh, with the uh, you know public sector organisation or the authorities that oversees you know some of these issues. So that's why through this nexus. You have got the private sector people there. These are practitioners, people who understand issues on ground. And again, as I've said before, we engage, you know, we, with the government or with the public sector, we need to do verification, we need to have substance, we need to have information, so that whatever decision that we make is going to be a well-informed decision, taking into account all factors that I've mentioned. Right. Safety, security, environment, right. welfare. Right. Okay, Jacob, jump in there if you, if you can and tell us about how the workforce performance issue really uh, plays out in the private uh, healthcare system. What exactly are the deficits and where is it that things need to change, especially where government can help enable that change? Actually, uh, there are no uh, specialists being trained today uh, in adequate numbers for the private sector. So our easy way is to look at senior doctors from the public sector who are willing to come and join us. But we feel today our private hospitals are well developed and able to train good specialists within the private sector itself. So what we want to do is to take medical officers who have already been trained, uh, finished their housemanship, take them into the private sector, either to become an ENT specialist or an orthopedic surgeon, put them to a training program where they can continue to service. Now, this might also mean that the private sector will take it on themselves to send this specialist or this medical officer abroad to get some of his training and bring them back and continue to work with us and we'll be self-sufficient that way so we can decide which specialists we want to train. So what stopped uh, pr the private sector hospitals from doing that in the past? I mean, is this about certification? Is that what, what, what is preventing this from happening? We have not uh, been uh, allowed to, uh, well, we were not, uh, uh, the programs which were developed or beginning to be developed were not fully approved. So we want them to be approved. So we are beginning as part of this nexus to work with universities and to look at can we come up with a curriculum which is approved by the Ministry of Health, by the universities, by everybody, so that when this specialist comes out, he's ready to go anywhere in the country. 
be it the public sector or the private okay, sector. Okay, so it's not to the detriment of the public sector. No, it we can don't be want to pinch okay. because there's enough workload for these specialists in the public sector, and we don't want to take them out. Understood. And uh, so that that's the reason. So workforce is one area where the public and the private can share. What about sure. equipment? Can oh, that is that, is that that's also an area? That's another can main share? issue which we are looking at. If you look at some of the equipment technology you have in some private hospitals in some states in the country, they have too many and it is not being utilized fully. So there is no productivity. You have an expensive piece of equipment which is not fully utilized. The hospital loses money and uh, you, you want to utilize it more. So we are looking at public-private partnership to utilize some of this equipment and also private-private partnership where one private hospital can share a piece of equipment with another private hospital. So that is what we are moving towards. Very quickly, what again, what prevented this to ha from happening? A referral letter could have been issued in the past, could it not, for people to go to another hospital to get it? Well, it was not thought about. Every <laughs> hospital Competition. thought that if you don't have a MRI or a CT scan, you're not good enough. And so we wanted this thinking to change. So this is about branding the hospital. That's right. It? And oh, that hospital doesn't have an MRI or that hospital doesn't have a CT scan. But we have a situation where in some states that far too many, seven uh, or six PET scans where each one is not. And so we are talking about productivity yeah. here. How much are you going to use that? And it's huge monies being spent. Ensuring that the productivity of that machine is uh, maximized, yes, right? that's right. Unfortunately, gentlemen, that's all the time we have for the show tonight. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you both. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, it's you our too. pleasure. Thank Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back with another episode of Consider This same time tomorrow. I'm Melissa Idris, with me, Sharad Kutten, signing off. Thank you for watching. Good night.